Welcome everyone. In this video, we are going to talk about impulse and we will see how it relates to force, momentum, all that quantities that we love so much. Okay. So what is impulse? Impulse is, by definition, the change in the momentum of a system or of an object. So impulse is, by definition, the change of momentum, the change in momentum. And if we have the delta in front of an expression, that simply means that we are subtracting the final value. Well, actually, we're subtracting the initial value from the final value. Okay? So if someone were to tell you, let's say that, you know, it had some object had an initial momentum of, I don't know, like 10. Ooh, what are the units? Well, let's write it like kilograms per meters per second. And then it was 5 kilograms than meters per second. You would say that the impulse is 5 kilograms meters per second. And this would be the answer. Of course, this is a very simple problem if it is asked like this. But we will also deal with more interesting problems. And also, even though this set of units is correct, kilograms times meters per second, because, you know, momentum is mass times velocity by definition. Mass is kilograms and velocity is meters per second. So momentum should have units kilograms times meters per second. That is correct. But while dealing with impulse, we often use another unit, which is equivalent to kilogram, kilograms times meters per second. They are completely equivalent, but uh, somehow people prefer to express the unit of impulse in a different way, which you will see why in a minute probably. Okay, so I will erase this part because that was just an example. Now, if we think about if we think about Newton's second law in the most general case, case, it is that the force, the net force acting on a system or acting on an object is equal to its time derivative of its momentum. The time derivative of the momentum gives the net force on the system. Now, if we toss the dt to the other side, we see that f dt is equal to dp. And if we take the integral on both sides, then we would see on the right we would have infinitesimal dps added up. So that is just the change in the, well also, I mean, if you're doing it in a physical sense, you have a, like an initial time, a final time, and you have an initial momentum and a final momentum. If you do this integral, then on the right, you basically have P, evaluate that P final and P initial, which is, and these are vectors. I sometimes forget writing that, but they are vectors. P final minus P initial. And if you look at the impulse definition we made here, you can see that this is equal to impulse. And impulse is also a vector because it's the change in momentum and momentum is a vector. I should have put the arrows here, but you get the idea, I hope. Impulse is a vector, but what did we find? We found that the impulse is equal to this integral from some time t initial to t final. This is the main deal for our video. This is the main thing, basically. And we will do some exercises where we practice, practice with this formula. What I want to now mention is the unit of the impulse. So, we already solve. There are two alternatives for writing it. One was thinking, okay, impulse is the change in the momentum. Momentum is mass times velocity. So, the unit is kilograms times meters per second, which is correct. And these brackets denote the unit of the quantity which is inside. And another way of looking at it is this, which is used more often while giving the unit, uh, while giving a numerical answer for, a, for an impulse problem. So if you look at this integral, well, we have force, which is newtons, and we have dt, which is seconds. 
So the unit is newtons times seconds. And this is the one that is used more commonly. Of course, you can see that these are equivalent because what is a newton? Newton is going to be kilograms times meters per second square. You have another square, another second, which cancels the square here, okay? So as I said, both are equivalent. You can express the unit however you want, but from my experience, this is used more commonly for impulse, and this one is used while giving the momentum, okay? But I want to repeat this. They are the same thing. You can use which of one of whichever you want. They are the same thing. Okay. So using the formula that we just derived, basically, we just proved, let's just do some exercises. So, for example, if there is a force, uh, let's say... So what if the force is constant? If the force is constant, if there's a constant force, then we can simply take it out of the integral. So we will see that the impulse is, well, you take the force out, then you have T initial, T final, DT. This just gives T here, and you evaluate it at the boundaries, which is this business that you see right here which you can write shorthand as F times delta T, okay? This is also a formula that is commonly used while dealing with impulse. It is very important to keep in mind that the force is constant here. And this is also used to uh, analyze systems in which the collision time is very small. If the delta T is very small, you can treat as if the force is kind of constant to get an approximate result for your answer. So this is also used commonly, especially in introductory level problems about this topic. But as I said, theoretically, you can only use this formula if the force is constant, if it doesn't change with respect to time. But in reality, that isn't really guaranteed. So you just approximate it. You just try to see maybe if the collision can be explained like that. You make some measurements, you also use this idea, and you compare your predictions to the measurements. That's how science works, basically. What you write on the paper, even though it might be mathematically, mathematically sound, should, should still be tested through experiment, because the experiment is the real deal at the end of the day. Okay. But what if, you know, there is a force that is changing, let's say, I don't know, let me just make up some random force. Let's say that we have a constant K and then the force is T squared. And it's in the exact direction, let's say. Okay. How do we take this integral then? Well, to find the impulse, and also I need to give a time interval, right? Maybe I say, you know, I apply this force from... Uh, time equaling, I don't know, uh, one second to uh, final time of, I don't know, five seconds. Let's see what happens then. I write the impulse, and I want to find the impulse, right? This is the main goal of this video. We are going to have the integral. We have the boundaries, one and five. They are seconds, even though I don't write the unit next to them. Then we have the force inside, which is kT squared x hat, and then dt. Here I said that k is a constant, so you can take it out of the integral. And x hat is a constant. It's a direction which does not change with respect to time in our set of coordinates. This is just a one-dimensional problem, okay? You might have some coordinates that change with respect to time, but we're not dealing with that here. t squared dt... Uh, so, okay, how do we take this integral? You raise the power by 1, you divide by the new power, and you have the boundaries. Um, okay, kx hat, and then we have, so we have square of 5, well, what's that? It's 125, divide by 3, and then minus 1 over 3. In fact, we have nice numbers, I think. Interesting I didn't think about it before. <laughs> okay, and divide by 3. 
what does that give us? Kx uh, times uh, 4, no, it isn't divisible actually. <laughs> I thought we could divide it by 3 for some reason. No, no, it's not divisible. So, let's write it as, this is the answer by the way, like we're done. And obviously, you would need to give, well, you would need to have some significant figures, right? You don't leave your answers like this in physics. You have some significant figures, but let's not care about that for now. And is this it? Like, is this the correct answer? You might be saying, yeah. Well, kind of, because you see, I would prefer if you wrote Newton seconds here to denote the unit, basically. Otherwise, this is completely useless. Of course, you might be saying, well, what about the unit of K? Because we made a deriv derivation, you know? <clears throat> K also has a unit. It is newtons per second squared. And if I multiply it by newton times second, well, I get something bizarre, right? Why did this happen? You might be tempted to ask. And you are, you are right to ask that. The thing is, here we have second squared, right? Actually, this part is second squared. And... And this part is newtons per second squared. So at the end, you get newtons times second. Which, as I said, I mean, you don't really need to write it, I guess, here, because it is implied here. But if you were to also be given a value for k, let's say I told you that, I don't know, let's do it, actually. Let's, I, let's say that k is equal to, I don't know, let's choose a nice number. So if it is... If it is three, <laughs> if it is three newtons per second squared, if I give you this value, because like without, uh, without getting rid of all of the constants, all of the symbolic num symbols, it doesn't really mean to give a unit. Okay, you should have all numbers before you are giving the unit. Something to keep in mind. So one hundred twenty-four times three. K is 3 again, then we have X at 124, and now you should, you should write this is Newton seconds as your final answer, okay? Now, you could go on, go on like this, you could try some different formulas, many different things actually, and another good example is, you know, why airbags are used in cars, the thing is, in a, and hopefully it doesn't happen, but in case of an air car accident, and I'm talking in rough terms here, okay? Like, approximately I am describing what would happen. The driver would, let's say, they had some initial momentum, and when the accident happens or when the car immediately stops, their final momentum will be zero. And no matter what happens, like we can't change the car such that the change in the momentum is less. The change in the momentum will happen. There is a certain amount of change in momentum that will take place due to the collision or due to the immediate stop of the car, okay? So the delta P, this is fixed. And what we know is delta P, which is the impulse is equal to this integral. Either two things are going to happen. If the collision time, if the stopping time, so let's say it like this, if the stopping time for the driver, because, I mean, in this kind of a case, we don't really care about the car, do we? We want to make sure that the passenger, the driver, they are uh, healthy. We, that's what we care about. We want to make sure that they are safe. And then we can talk about the car, but really in this kind of a vital situation, the human beings are the important part. So we want to make sure that the stopping, part, stopping time for... So two things can happen. Two things can happen. One, either the stopping time is fast. Uh, is fast. So you're not giving enough time between T final and T initial, the stop is immediate, or as immediate as it gets, let's say. In that case, 
force is great. It's a great force and that's going to cause some problem because a greater force means that it can deform, deform the body of the passengers more. This is not the thing that we want. What we want is, we want that the stopping time is slow. We want to make sure that the passengers change their momentum in a longer time, period of time. So, if this happens, the T final and T initial, they are more far, further apart, and this part is fixed, the change in the momentum is the same, which means that the force should be less this time. So, force... F is less, which is what we want because a smaller force would be less uh, harmful for the passengers. So this is what we want. And this is why airbags are used in cars. Airbags help to make the stopping time uh, greater. Stopping time, well, <laughs> this is interesting. So stopping time is fast. We should say, let's say, stopping time is long and short because a time interval can't be fast or slow. It can be long or short. So it would be like, if the stopping time is short, then the force is great. And if the stopping time is long, if the stop takes more slowly, if it is long, then the F is going to be less. So as I said, in cars, airbags help to do this. They make sure that the stopping time for the passengers is longer so that they are able to change their momentum in a greater period of time, which means that they are experiencing, experiencing a less force overall during the collision, okay? Which can be quite helpful. And another example is, you know, while you're jumping from a high place, maybe, you know, you are jumping from the stairs, which I wouldn't suggest you do. Let's say that there's a one meter jump from the top of the stairs. And if you bend your, if you bend your knees, that is allowing for a greater time of contact between the, uh, between the floor and your, and your body, basically. So you're jumping in a more smoother way, let's say, when you land on your, uh, on your feet, uh, the land is more smoother, the time of stopping is long so again the force that you experience is less which can help you avoid your uh, avoid injuring your well your knees or other parts of your leg basically okay so that is another place where we see it we intuitively do this we get used to it as human beings but you know if you analyze the situation bending your knees while you're jumping uh, is while while you're landing actually right while you are landing is helpful and this is something that athletes practice because while athletes are practicing or performing in matches they might injure themselves so they make sure that they land on their feet in a safe manner and the safe manner most of the time means that you keep your balance and the force acting on you is not very big it is a small force so for that, the stopping time should be a long time. And of course, everything is relative. What is a long time? Well, you could discuss that philosophically, I guess. Anyways, this is it for this video. If you have any questions, please add them in the comment section. I hope to see you in another video. Until then, take care.